I think it might be episode. your best effort of the offseason, Jeff. Oh, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, we're, we're hoping to ramp it up for the season, and then hopefully, uh, you know, when, when we get into the season, uh, you know, we'll be able to kind of provide some insight for people who like to, to listen to podcasts. All right, well, hopefully you can provide some insight for me today because I'm confused, Jeff, as we're getting closer and closer to start of the regular season. Obviously, a lot of people are putting out their projections and predictions. There's There's computer systems. There's people that cover the league. And... In recent days, more and more people seem to be saying that the Eagles will start the season slow. I don't see it, Jeff. Maybe a loss against Green Bay is one thing, but the NFC South, I don't see them struggling against those three teams. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I did my season my uh, game by game prediction for the season um, last week, and I, guess, I think we'll run it sometime this week. And you know, I mean, it was it, it was tough to kind of figure out a little bit of the early going. Because because again, we just you know, there's a lot of uncertainty heading into our, our first first game, and, and the Eagles have a little more this year, a little more mystery than, than in previous years because they have two new coordinators. Um, you know, that said, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I have them, you know, with a winning record and reaching the playoffs. So uh, it's not like they couldn't start the season four and zero. I mean, it's not you know they can they can beat all these teams. I guess of course the any given that adage always applies. They could beat any team. Um, I think the Packers are going to be certainly a tough, t- tough test. Um, the Falcons, you know, they seem to, you know, they have a better quarterback with Kirk Cousins. Um, they have a new coach, so a little mystery there. Uh, and then, you know, as you mentioned, uh, the Bucks. Well, first it's the Saints, and then the Bucks. And yeah, I mean, yeah, this, this has been a division that has, over the last several years, not been very, you know, not been that great. At least, certainly since Tom Brady left the, left the division. The idea that the Eagles and, and we we've got we were talking a lot of people off the ledge, believing that what they saw at the end of last year is who the Eagles really are, not the team that was ten and one before it. Uh, if, if I was to say to you, what is the most logical fear that an Eagles fan would have going into this season after seeing training camp, after seeing the offseason moves, what is it, Jeff? I mean, I don't know if it's logical, but I, I guess I'd be a little fearful that, you know, this blitz thing isn't, isn't going to get fixed. Um, I, you know, I know that they spent a lot of the all season really working on giving Jalen answers, particularly against those zero blitz. I mean, that was the one thing that he really struggled against, whether they came or they showed and they dropped. Um, you know, sometimes he panicked, and, and I think someone had to do with the scheme, not really helping him out. Uh, of course, there's been a lot written about, you know, Jason Kelsey's no longer there, setting the protections. That'll now fall a little more on the shoulders of Jalen. It's something that he says that he wants. Um, but, you know, he'll split some of that responsibility with Cam Jurgens and the other offensive linemen as well. Um, the, the, the other issue, the one that I kind of think is a little bit under the radar is, is just the pass rush. That's the one thing that I think I'm a little more focused on in terms of it being an issue for the for the Eagles, and that's something that they've always uh, emphasized and spent a lot of money on up front. Um, certainly in the draft over the last several years, they've, they've beefed up the interior line, and Jalen Carter and, and Jordan Davis, frankly, are going to have to step up um, with you know Fletcher Cox no longer there. And on the edges, which is probably a little more of a concern to me, um, you know, that they don't have a guy that I think could step into the Hassan Reddick role. They're not really asking Bryce Huff to do that as much. They want the collective group to do that. But, I mean, so you're expecting Josh White, who almost let walk. You're expecting him to, to help to chip in there. Brandon Graham, who's 36 and playing in his last year. And then Nolan Smith, who is really a big question mark at this point. Um, that, to me, is kind of uh, where I'm really focused on. If I'm looking at the Eagles, especially on the defensive side, and wondering, you know, if, if this goes sideways, you know, what it could be the issues. All that being said, I certainly think that the, the, the hiring of Vic Fangio is a significant upgrade over what they had last year, defensive coordinator position. So going back to last year, of one of the biggest issues, whatever you believe the biggest issue was for the Eagles that led to the downfall, the collapse, do you think it was addressed and do you think it will be in a better place this season? Whatever it may have been for you. Um. Yeah. Well, they got rid of the coordinators who weren't ready to be coordinators, right? And they brought in experienced guys, and they kind of took a little bit away from Nick. That's been addressed. 
All right. Because so, so, sort of sums it up right there. Because yesterday I was trying to yeah. uh, I was trying to do something that yesterday was move forward day. We're moving forward past the Phillies uh, struggles that they were having earlier in the summer, and I think we should officially move forward from last year with the Eagles. Because there are still Eagles fans that call in and text in and tweet in that that say, "Man, until I see them play well, I'm still going to be worried about that collapse and if that carries over into this season." Whereas I believe um, the majority of reasons why you had to collapse. They've addressed it, and they have fixed it. Whether it's talent, coaching, or the relationship between Hearts and Sirianni, it seems like everything seems to be in a better place this year. Is there anything yeah. that you believe is still not better? Well, I mean, I, I, mean, uh, I, mean, I don't know. I, I think if they lose in the first game, then what happens, right? Um, as Mike Tyson said, you know, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? So, um that all sounds great and everything that we've been writing about for the last however months about all the changes and the, and the off-season acquisitions and blah, blah, blah. It means nothing until they actually play the games for real. And that's when we'll start to find out. Yeah, that's, you know, I'm here, you know, I'm here to, to analyze all that, to report on all that, to, to dig deep into, um, all of that. You know, as you guys mentioned at the top about the podcast, one of the, you know, the main topic of that uh, episode was looking at Nick Sirianni and how he's tried to kind of, Temper down his temperament a little bit. Um, you know, not not be the guy that looks unhinged on the sidelines, which I think in a lot of ways represented what was really happening. What I knew was happening behind the scenes, that of a team unfolding. Um, I think Nick has tried to address that. But what happens when uh, you know the Eagles are in a tight spot late in the game, and and or there's a call that goes against the Eagles, and Nick wants to berate an official again, and everyone else on the sidelines watching their head coach uh, become unrattled. I mean, you know, so. Yes. Um, a lot of these issues have been addressed uh, by Howie Roseman in terms of personnel and, and certainly, I guess, Howie Roseman in terms of the coaching person, personnel as well. Um, and, and by Jeffrey Lowry bringing Nick Sirianni back and, and having conversations with him about the areas in which he needs to improve. Um, the coordinators, as I mentioned, the whole blitz stuff for Jalen Hurts. Um, you know, that's all, as you said, has been addressed. And, and I will say this, I mean, Year to year, we things change dramatically um, for teams. But this, you know, if you look at the roster, it is what it is. They have a lot of talent on the offensive side of, side of the ball, skill position, especially um, on the defensive side. They've they've addressed some of the problems that they had in the back seven uh, by drafting Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene and bringing in uh, C.J. Gardner Johnson and, and uh, upgrading the the inside linebacker spot. But they just have to now go out there and do it. When you look at the division. Do you see any team in this division as legitimately a threat to win 12 other than the Eagles? Cowboys? I mean, Giants and Commanders, I don't think anybody would say that. Probably not. Probably not. Uh, I guess the Cowboys have the most um, arsenal to, to win 12 um, on both sides of the ball. It seems like with, with the Cowboys, it's like one year off and, and one year on, um, and there's a lot of pressure there on Mike Mike McCarthy, probably more than there is on Nick Sirianni, if you ask me. Um, and as I guess the same goes for Dak Prescott. But um, no, I think it's, you know I think the, I think eleven wins could win the division, maybe even ten. Wow, how about that, Jeff? We appreciate it, man. Uh, when's when's the flight travels, and will we be able to hear from you? Because uh, you know maybe there's well, some. You can't tweet. Yeah, you can't tweet. So yeah. uh, you know, I hope everything's okay when you're out in Sao Paulo. Yeah, we leave we leave tonight and fly. Through Miami overnight, and then land tomorrow morning. Oh, just, just South send Palo. me, just send me your password, and I'll, I'll tweet for you. How about yeah? He's yeah, not trusting that. Yeah. How about Jeff McLean on a nine and a half hour flight? What, what, what's the in the travel? Watching TV shows? Hopefully, Are you reading? Hopefully sleeping. You sleep? Hopefully sleeping. I'm Win- hoping. Window or aisle seat? Uh, I do. I'll do a window, although that's going to have to, you know, that'll probably become an issue at some point on the, during nine hours. But yeah. um, I'm hoping I can. I'm hoping I can. I hope hoping I can sleep. I'm not the greatest flyer in the world. All so. right. Well, Jeff. Good, good luck, man. Have a safe trip. Thanks, Enjoy Jeff. yourself as much as you can while you're out there. And uh, you know, we'll 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 be following along uh, Twitter somehow with you.